Hello and welcome to the 34th video in this series of tutorial videos programming in C. So we're carrying on with our tic-tac-toe series here, a very simple bare bones tic-tac-toe. In the last video we looked at getting the human move, in this video we're going to look at getting the computer move. So we're going to call it int get goodness sake computer move and take in also as we did for the human move a pointer to our board and now let's think about how we're actually going to get a computer move. We're not going to implement any AI in this video, this will come later on. I just want to get a random move. So we need to be able to store the moves in an array that are available and keep a count of the number of moves available. So I've got some variables here defined and I'll talk through how this is going to work. So index is simply for looping and the key variables here are num free and available moves. And the way this is going to work is say we loop through the board and we find that the squares 2, 4 and 8 on a 9 based index are available moves. And as we loop through the board the way we'll store this is we'll store in available moves at index 0 we'll then store the 2 and in available moves at index 1 and index 2 we'll then store the 4 and the 8. And what we'll then do is we'll get a random number from 0 to 2 and return available moves the random number which will be either 2, 4, 8. Of course these will be converted to the 25 index but let's just stick with the 0 to 8 at the moment uh, the 1 to 9 at the moment. So that should be fairly understandable of how we're going to do it and this count here of how many there are will be from num3. So num3 starts off at naught. We add the first number, we increment it, which makes num3 then a 1, and then num3 is used as a 1 here, and here then when the 4 is added, num3 then gets incremented to a 2, and num3 is then added here, and now num3 is incremented then to a 3. So that should be fairly self explanatory. And then to get our random number, we simply use rand moduloed by num3 which will give us 0 to 2 which we'll be using then for our index. So that's how it's going to work. So to set this up we need to loop through the 9 squares on the board using our 0 based converting the square to the internal 25 index. If the square is empty then it's an available square to move. So we do this, we add at index num3 the square converted to 25 and then we increment num3. Now a thing that might cause a frown here or a puzzle is how this is working. Well this is in effect exactly the same as doing num3 to 3 down here and not having the increment. And this is where there is a difference between having the plus plus on the left of the variable or on the right, so it's called a pre or a post increment. And usually there are a lot of cases where it doesn't matter which one you use, but in this case it does matter. Because when you use it as a post increment, when you're referencing an array, it'll use the value of num3 as an index and then increment it. If I put the plus plus on the left, like I've got with index here, it would increment num3 first and then use the value of num3 as the index, which obviously we don't want because num3 starts out as 0 and the first number we add is at index 0. So we do it with the post increment and it saves one line of code here without putting the num3 below. Now that should be fairly self-explanatory. And all that remains to do then is get the random move, as I've explained in the comments here, and then send back the available moves indexed by random move. So that's done. I'm going to delete these comment oh, I'll leave these comments there now actually for this video because they don't really get in the way. What remains now is actually to implement the game logic so far that we can actually get it running. It won't detect a win but it will detect a draw. So the first thing we do is we say that the last move made is equal to get human move and then we need to make this move and the arguments are the board and I can't remember if it's square side or side square board square side 
So the last move made and the side is not. In fact, I can just send in side. And then what we want to do is once the side that's been done, the side needs to be changed. So it will be now be put equal to crosses. And we can do exactly the same now for the computer, except we call it get computer move. And we make the move and change the side to nodes. And here we'll also print the board so the human can see the state of the board. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So the way this loop will now run, and I've deleted the remove me line that was down here already, while not game over, so while it's game over is zero, the side will be naught, we're going to move from the human, it'll be made on the board, the side is changed to crosses. Next loop, the side's now crosses, so we drop into here, get a computer move, make it, change the side to naught, print the board, next loop, side is now naught, and this keeps on going ad infinitum. And what we're going to say in this video is the draw detection. And this says if there are no empty squares left on the board, then the game is a draw because later on before the draw detection we'll do the detection here for three in a row but if it's not been three in a row and it won't be at all at the moment because we don't have any code for it and it's full the board then it must be a draw so we say game over equals one and we break out of the while loop so it's very basic let's compile this and run and now we enter a move from 1 to 9 and later on we'll actually print a better board with the coordinates but for now we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so let's enter at 8 and now you can see our naught has appeared there and the computer has got a cross here and I'll just break out of this I'd put some added some code in which I'm going to delete now which printed both bits of the board because I was checking everything was working okay so I'll just compile and run again okay so we enter move at 8 and now the computer has put his cross here so now let's enter a move, let's try and enter at 8 again and it says square not available so let's now try and enter at 1, 2 where the computer moved square not available so you can see that our processing for the human move is also working so now let's enter at 1 our naught is at 1 and we can see that a cross has been entered here by the computer so let's keep going now until the board actually fills up and we get to enter the last naught here which is at square 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and now it says game over it's a draw it's detected that the board is full so that's quite good really with not very much code and some simple functions we're into the state where the game is running and now in the next video we need to actually think about how we do this part which is a little bit trickier which is to find out whether three in a row exists or not and someone has actually won the game so thanks very much for watching and comments questions criticisms welcome as always on youtube